Freeze my drip gaming here, and if you want to get better with the specific Northgard clan, then my how to Northgard series is perfect for you. Today we'll be going over the clan of the eagle. I'll tell you guys about the features and starting bonuses of the eagle clan. We will also go over the build order. I'll let you guys know the preferred lore order, and lastly, I'll talk about the military path for eagle. That being said, make sure you like and subscribe. You really help out the channel, and the support will allow me to put more time and effort into my videos. I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. You guys have kept me motivated, and I appreciate the feedback in order to make my videos better for you guys. I also have some affiliate links to Amazon in the description below. Just clicking on the links helps out the channel a ton. Let's begin. Eagle has a 1 star difficulty to learn, a 1 star development, a 2 star military, and a 2 star support. Just from looking at Eagle's ratings, they look like an easy clan to use but with capped power. In cases like this, you have to find the clan's strength and use it as much as you can early in mid game. Let's talk about Eagle's starting and fame bonuses and then we'll talk about how to win with them. For Eagle, the Avery replaces the scout camp. They train falconeers and revealed buried caches on the map over time. You start with one hawk. Hawk turns cleared zones into boneyards, providing natural resources from the zone and healing your units. Avery's require no building slots and increase the maximum numbers of hawks you can send to boneyards, which in return gives you more resources from clearing zones. You gain no fame from colonizing new zones. Falconeers gain lore when scouting new zones. They can open shipwrecks and ruins as well as sealed wolf dens and draugr tombs outside of your territory. The buried caches on the map will give you three resources, usually either food or wood for the first resource, then gold or lore for the second resource, and stone or iron for the last resource. Created boneyards will heal your units for two months, which is about two minutes, and the more hawks you have, the more resources you get from the boneyards. Loot pouches will drop in the cleared zones when the boneyard is created. You can take the resources for yourself, or you can let your allies colonize the zone, then they get the resources. Time for the fame bonuses. For 200 fame, you unlock Nomadic Tribe. Units outside the territory consume 30% less food and firewood. Zones can be upgraded using food, and in upgraded zones, houses give plus one population and military buildings give plus one war ban. At 500 fame, you have scavenging. Ruins, shipwrecks, and all specialized zones can be explored once more to gain additional resources. With Eagle's Relic, buried caches have a chance to become forbidden caches. When opened, you get a 2% attack power bonus for all military units until a max of 10%. Any of your units in the zone when the forbidden cache is released will gain a 10% attack bonus until they die, a max of 30%. Powerful monsters are released when forbidden caches are opened, so be ready to fight with your army. I usually don't focus on Relic for Eagle because you have have to attack early and often to be successful with eagle and relic prolongs that you do gain a significant damage boost so if you have time later on you can go for relic to win with eagle you have to have your opponent scouted and army built up by the beginning of 802 they only have a one star development so having a large economy will only slow you down from getting your army up and running while your opponent with the same economy will be much more efficient than you you have to attack early before they can form their large armies most of their benefits comes from scouting and having their three averies up as soon as possible this way you can get iron and stone without building mines. If you are struggling to reach your caches, don't be afraid to build a mine. Other clans expect eagle to clear, even though I consider eagle a weaker clear, at least for the first year, but the clan will have no problem clearing tiles in 801. And one last tip before we hop into the build order. Eagle receives rewards from creatures based on the tile they are in. For example, if you kill a wolf in a tile with an iron mine, you will receive one iron for each creature you kill in that tile. So it's a little different from wolf and lynx. Let's hop into the build order. First build an Avery to scout your main tiles. Then I grab the first zone from my house and my woodcutter to go. Usually I try to grab my iron tile if I can, in case I don't get enough iron for my first two caches. If your two open tiles are the tiles you need, you can wait on building a training camp. If you need to clear a couple tiles, make a training camp and make two warriors. I'll bring my falconeers back to focus on food and have two woodcutters going. Then build a house. You should be able to get one food building built during the first summer. Then you'll want a second woodcutter's lodge. Next, you'll want two Avery's up, which will generate your resource caches even faster. A trading post is next. If you have a couple treasures near you, you don't have to build a trading post this early because you'll have have enough gold for your chief without it. After that, a food silo. I usually save up over 250 food for the first winter, then I run four woodcutters and two to three scouts depending on my food reserves. If you haven't built a camp yet, get one down to hire your chief. Then another house. Next, put down a forge. You'll want to upgrade your food unit, then your falconeers, then your merchants, and your military units. All three if you can, but one or two is fine. You'll have a ton of stone and iron left over in 802, so don't worry about all the iron you'll need for your forge. The falconeers will gather all of it. If you have too much excess resources, build a second trading post to generate gold quicker. Then after that, build your camps. I try to put all three camps in one zone, then upgrade the zone to get the extra warband from our fame bonuses, but as long as you can make a warband between 13 to 16, you should be fine. And the earlier you fight, the smaller your warband can be. It's a very small build compared to some other clans, and this build isn't meant for games that go past 803, so try to be aggressive and clear as much as you can while scouting. It also depends on your game. This is a very good build for 1v1 and 2v2s, but if you're doing a free-for-all or a 3v3, you might want a more sustainable and economic build, be stronger, 
late game. I already mentioned the iron upgrades. So for the stone upgrades, you'll do your town hall. Then next is your food building. Then after that is a trading post. And last, you do your Avery. That's for a total of 35 stone. And you can trade the rest away. If you want to rush even quicker, you can skip the food building upgrade and use that gold for an extra unit. For the lower order, we start with Weaponsmith. You get a lot of bonuses from clearing tiles. I don't go to sharp axes like I do with most builds. With two woodcutter lodges and usually two to four woodcutters always running, I don't need it. For the second lore, I grab Blood Eagle, which causes a bird to blind the enemy, forcing them to miss their next three attacks, which helps a lot with clearing. For the third lore, we take Training Fields. This is the happiness lore for Eagle. Training Fields, you gain three plus happiness if you have Griff the War Chief, and plus one happiness for each neutral or allied zone adjacent to your territory with no hostile units. Your population will boom from 10 to 20 very quick early on, which allows for a rush-like style of play. Next is Foraging. You gain 6% more resources when closing a wolf den, a draugr tomb, or colonizing a special zone. This is super helpful with the stone and iron since we don't build mines. You get 8 stone or iron from colonizing special zones instead of the usual 5. It's also very helpful for getting fame since Eagle does struggle with fame and you need to be at 200 before you get a decent sized army because of the food and wood reduction bonuses. You'll receive 48 fame instead of the usual 30 from colonizing special zones. Then we get coinage. After that, we go back to the middle tree and grab military strategy. Once I hit military strategy, this is when I usually start to build up a bigger army of around 6 to 8 units to clear most of the neutral tiles. And I'll try to have at least one warrior and one shield bearer, with the rest usually being archers. In the last lore you want before you attack is Raffine. Boneyard effect is applied to enemy decolonized zones. All your hawks gather resources from enemy production buildings in the zone. This allows you to heal as you decolonize each zone, which allows for relentless pushes, especially in 802. Usually at the end of 802, I go get fur coats, especially if there's fighting in the winter. Hopefully the game is almost over, but if not, I go to sharp axes so I can get to sentinel next. With sentinel, falconeers gain the ability keeping watch. Hawks watch over the zone and improving attack power of military units by 10% and the production of allied specialized units by 15%. Your war chief automatically deploys a hawk to keep watch over the zone. This is a very strong lore, but it's hard to work in training fields and coinage early on if you go for sentinel first, thus delaying your attack. Where I would rather have the happiness and the gold and receive resources from looting early on. But if you're going with the more late game build, sharp axes into sentinel is a fine choice as well. For the military path, you'll want to go leadership. Like with the wolf clan, the bodyguard is a huge help early on for clears. With eagle, buried caches will accumulate a ton of iron, so it's possible to upgrade more than one military unit. And with leadership, your war chief also receives benefits from forged weapons, giving you an extra edge in the fight. Overall, I enjoy Eagle. It's a fun, faster-paced clan that doesn't have a lot of downside to it. I will say its economy can't compete with a lot of other clans, so late-game battles, you may be at a slight disadvantage. The bigger the map, the more advantageous for Eagle. If you enjoy a clan that can apply a lot of military pressure early and not have to rely on others to scout the map for you, then Eagle is a great clan to try out. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Eagle and how you play Eagle. There's not a lot of gameplay out there for Eagle, so I'm interested in what you guys think is the best way to play this clan. Don't forget to follow my socials at FreezeMyDrip on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks for watching. See you next time.